Now, for some reason, we don't like to freeze. We don't like to starve. It's very uncomfortable. We like warm weather. We like to have food available all the time, and we definitely like to be comfortable as far as our temperature. Well, our ancestors have adapted to temperature over a very long period of time due to the season called winter. Nowadays, we can easily overcome this severe cold winter by just turning the thermostat to 70 degrees. Today, I'm going to talk about some interesting research relating to cold water immersion and your genes and how using cold therapy can greatly affect your genes in a positive way. Now, I have an actual cold water immersion tank outside my house. And when I first used it, uh, I set the temperature to 37 degrees. Okay, that's pretty darn cold. And uh, I don't recommend doing that to start out with because uh, I could only last five seconds. I would recommend starting out like at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius, starting out with just a minute, you know, and then gradually working up from that. But to experience the benefits of this cold therapy, you want to be uncomfortable. And to experience the benefits I'm going to talk about, you really only need 11 minutes per week. So anyone can do that. Even if you don't have a cold water immersion tank, you can do this with a cold shower. You can find a pool that's really cold or maybe jump in the pond somewhere. But there's different ways of experiencing this therapy. Now, if you compare cold therapy to warm therapy, like a a hot shower, you're definitely going to experience more benefits with the cold therapy simply because it's more uncomfortable. If you just can't even fathom to doing this or have no tolerance for doing this, it could be that you just need more B vitamins. B vitamins help increase the tolerance to extreme temperatures. And I will put a link down below of where I got my tank. And I, I'm not affiliated with this company. I, I get no kickbacks, but it's called the Cold Plunge Store. And I bought the tank called the Flex, but I really like it. I think the benefits are amazing. You're going to find all sorts of cool benefits relating to cognitive benefits, physical inflammation, repair, etc. So I'm going to go through the benefits and then I'll talk about the genetic uh, benefits as well. However, I do want to make one point about when you initially get into this tank, uh, your pulse rate is going to go up, your heart rate is going to go up. Okay, you're going to have probably the urge to hyperventilate. Uh, you'll probably have respiratory gasping where your, your breathing is affected. You really have to focus on controlling your breath slow it down, breathe in, slow it down, breathe out. And that will help the shock of getting into this cold water immersion. So let's first talk about all the things that it can decrease. Okay. The first thing that it can decrease is the ratios of um, something called APOA to APOB ratios. And this really has to do with uh, a cardiovascular risk. Without getting into the details, APOA and APOE have to do with uh, proteins that are attached or that regulate the lipoproteins. And so when this ratio is decreased, uh, you have better uh, cardiovascular function. Another thing that will decrease is your homocysteine levels, okay? That is another factor that's uh, associated with cardiovascular problems. You also have decreased oxidative stress, a decrease in cortisol and the hormone that controls cortisol, which is ACTH. Which is interesting because you would think your stress would go up, but it actually goes down. Maybe not initially, but as soon as you get out of the tub and you're relaxed, antibodies even decrease. Okay, so this is going to strengthen your immune system, especially if you have an autoimmune problem. Your insulin actually goes down, and that's going to be a good thing because you could imagine how many body problems are associated with high insulin. Uric acid goes down. Your risk for upper respiratory tract infections goes down. And as a side note, it especially go down if you're a swimmer. Swimmers have this added benefit of the cardiovascular, plus many times these pools are on the cold side. So swimmers have a much less incidence of upper respiratory and tract infections. Another thing that will decrease is your depression, okay? Cold water therapy is like a natural antidepressant, but without the side effects. Pain will decrease, inflammation will decrease, muscle soreness will actually decrease. 
Now, I do want to mention another thing about muscle. There's been some research that shows that when you do this on a repetitive basis, cold therapy, um, it can actually inhibit your gains in growing muscle. But if you're just doing, you know, 11 minutes per week, I highly doubt it's going to influence your muscles in any negative way, shape, or form. The benefits far outweigh any potential downside. Now, your recovery time uh, will decrease when you do this therapy as well. So if you've just exercised or you've done some type of athletic event, you'll recover faster. And there's also evidence that shows that cold therapy actually inhibits the growth of tumors. And one theory why this does this is because of the spike in brown fat, which can suck up a lot of the glucose, which is fuel for cancer cells. But it does make sense that cold therapy would um, be anti-carcinogenic because of what it does to your genes, of what it does to your immune system, and what it does to your overall survival. Now, let's flip over to all the things that this cold therapy will increase, okay? It can increase your thyroid stimulating hormone as well as increase T3, which is the active form of the thyroid hormone. Cold therapy actually increases your T cells, okay? I'm talking about your killer T cells, which address viruses and attack cancer. Overall, it can increase your white blood cells. The concentration of zinc will increase. Your noradrenaline can increase, making you very, very alert. You can even increase your insulin sensitivity which has to do with lowering your overall insulin. Probably one of the biggest benefits that I like about this is that it increases your mental resilience. This is your capacity to adapt to stress. It makes you mentally strong when you do this. It's just kind of like the same thing with fasting. When you can not eat for a period of time, you develop a stronger willpower because you're basically now more in charge of your body versus people with a lowered willpower and they tend to cave when their body is craving things. Now let's talk about the gene expression, okay? We're turning on certain genes that were otherwise um, inhibited. There's one gene called PGC-1 alpha, and when this gene gets turned on, it creates mitochondria biogenesis. It actually increases the growth of mitochondria, which is gonna help your metabolism. It's gonna help generate more oxygen in the body. There's another gene called VEGF, which will increase more um, blood vessels. And so basically you're getting more um, angiogenesis, which is the production of new blood cells. There's another gene called PPARGC1A that has to do with VO2 max, your capacity to use oxygen. And if someone has a mutation with this gene, um, their VO2 max can be decreased up to 50%. So cold therapy can cause expression of this gene, turn it on, and increase your VO2 max. There's another gene called PSME1, which has to do with a, a protein aggregation or accumulation of damaged protein in the body, which creates a lot of problems. And when you add cold therapy, you can actually increase the recycling of this, this protein. So you get less accumulation of this protein aggregation. Another gene is expressed having to do with glutathione, which is like the most powerful antioxidant in your liver, which can help you break down poisons into harmless particles, which also can influence networks of other antioxidants. So cold therapy increases antioxidants. And as a side note, heat therapy, as in a sauna or even a jacuzzi, can inhibit uh, your antioxidants. Now, I'm not saying not to do it, but let's say, for example, you do have a problem genetically with oxidative stress. Then maybe you should focus more on cold therapy than heat therapy. There's another gene uh, that gets expressed called ACTN3, which has everything to do with increasing your tolerance to stress. So the more you do this, the more tolerance to stress you'll have, the more resistance to stress you'll have, the more mentally resilient you're going to be. And the last two genes, RBM3, and CIRP, you'll get more survival of your cells, improved DNA, stabilized RNA, which is the copy of the DNA, which will give you enhanced protein synthesis, or shall I say, uh, building of proteins, as well as an anti-inflammatory effect and an antioxidant effect. 
So as you can see, the benefits of cold water immersion are huge. And I think it's actually beneficial to alternate this with heat therapy. And if you haven't seen my video on that topic, I put it up right here. Check it out.